So we've now got a bullet that we've created and we want to be able to spawn this from our player. So what we're going to go and jump into is back onto our player and we can see we've got our space and we need to decide where we're going to spawn the bullet from. So we've got our camera pivot and if we just play around with this, you know, this is basically where the camera is currently looking. What I'm actually going to do is let's take the visor out of that and attach that to our camera pivot. So we've actually got that visor sort of moving. So that's like our head moving and spinning around. As part of this, we want to create a node where the bullet is going to spawn from. It's a good idea to have the bullet spawn just outside of the character so that we don't actually worry about any collisions inside. So I'm just going to go add a child node and it's just going to be a node 3D. And I'm going to rename that is bullet spawn and I'm going to just move this just out and let's actually change that camera so it's not actually looking down so it just looks straight ahead so we've got our little bullet spawn location and so what we want to have happen is when we press the fire button the bullet's going to be created there so we need to go back into the project settings and the input map and we're going to add a new one called fire and we're going to add some commands to that so we're just going to take the left left mouse button and let's do a controller one as well so joypad button and where is the trigger? Not right stick. Not left shift. Left, right. I don't want R3. Where's L2? Hmm. Oh, that could be because maybe it's under axes because that analog triggers. Yep, there we go, left trigger and right trigger. Drop it axis, right trigger. So the reason for that being is because on modern controllers, they're actually not a digital button, they're actually analog. So you can pull them halfway down. So we've now got our input controls. Next step is we're actually going to go and add some code to handle that. So we're going to jump back into our, our script. So we can sort of see, hey, there's a little square here that tells us that player's in a group. What we're going to do, click on our player. We're on our player script and we're going to go into our input event. So we've got our mouse motion. We're going to modify this. We're going to have, leave that there. We're going to have if input dot is action just pressed. Oh, is action just pressed. And we want it to be fire. Let's just do a print, just once again to check it's working. Jump back in, test that, and we can see that the fire has been pressed and detected. Okay, so we can comment that one out. Obviously, as I'm doing this, I should be adding lots of comments into that, so now I want to actually Spawn the bullet when this happens. And I'm going to do this with a different function. Function spawn, spawn bullet. So we can put this in a few different places. So bullet speed is under 25. So we can choose whatever speed we want. And when we're there, we're just going to tell it to run that spawn bullet function. But a couple of other things I might actually want to do. 
And here I am going to have another variable. I'm actually going to move the bullet speed up to here. And let's export another one. Actually, we're going to load bullet scene. Preload from the resources, from the models, bullet.tsn. So that's going to load in down there. What we're now going to get is we don't actually need this bullet speed here, but it means we can actually modify it at different situations. Now we need to go through and actually create our projectile. Or a bullet. So we're going to get our bullet scene. Dot instantiate to tell it what to create. We're going to use the add sibling. So that means it's at the same level as the player. So it's basically created in the environment. If we add it as a child, it's always linked to the player. And so whenever the player moves, all those other parts are going to update around. So we're going to add a sibling of the projectile. So we're going to add it to the scene that the player is in, basically. Now, we need to actually handle the projectile movement. So there's two things we do here. So we take the projectiles, transform, and we set that to basically the bullet spawn location. What we can actually do is up in this code, let's go and modify this. So on ready, So we have our bullet spawn point is assigned to dollars camera pivot slash bullet spawn. What that just means is it saves us having to write this full location in here. So bullet spawn point dot global transform oh, dot transform. And we're going to just get the global transform. So where it is where this bullet swarm point is inside of the entire level. Then we want to actually set the velocity, the speed essentially. Projectile dot linear velocity is set to the bullet spawn point dot the global transform. So where it is again. So we're just getting the direction. Whatever its z-axis is, uh, we might need to times it by minus one to flip it round. Times the bullet speed. Okay, so let's go and have a look at how that works. Oops, just realized actually made a mistake. We don't actually need got this extra transform here, so we're going to get rid of that. And now we'll go and check it. And also if we've got global transform dot basis dot z, so basically getting our default size. Let's go and check that. Hopefully this is going to run now. And we've got a bullet that is now shooting and ricocheting off all the other objects and then disappears. And when it times out. So we've got our 
core bullet basically being drawn, which will time out. And it's responding to all the physics engines. And note, it's going through this one because this one doesn't actually have a collision shape on it. So, there's basically how we can create bullets.